I help students who've been accused of sexual misconduct get into other schools or into grad school. Don't turn off the video yet. I'm not an assault or apologist. I want to eradicate sexual assault on campus. Sexual assault is unacceptable, and survivors need the support of the people around them. The number may be as high as one in four college women being assaulted during their college years. But we can't punish our way out of this problem. We need to respond to this epidemic in terms of what it really is, a public health issue. That starts by recognizing the gray zone. Let me show you what I mean. Colleges define sexual assault as any type of unwanted sexual touching. I have a student who was accused of sexual assault because of an unwanted hug. Others for rape. Stealing is wrong across the board, but some stealing is shoplifting gum, and some stealing is grand theft auto. We don't call those by the same name. We don't punish them with the same consequences. With students, it's the same thing. We need different words for different kinds of wrongdoing. I worked on one case where a young man and woman hooked up. They both agree that she said yes, but she said she didn't mean it. She said she said yes and faked an orgasm in order to get out of the room more gracefully. My student was found responsible for sexual assault and suspended for two and a half years. This is an extreme case, but I haven't found that yes always means yes. Consent is not always simple or clear cut, and we should teach young people how to navigate confusing moments instead of insisting it's all black and white. When someone is accused of sexual assault, we often think one person is telling the truth and the other is lying. But from what I've seen, both students are sincerely reporting their biased, externally influenced, and often drunken memories. I worked with a student who was accused of sexual assault for a hookup where both sides agreed consent was given. The accuser began crying during sex and it stopped. But she says he didn't stop right away. My student insists he stopped as soon as he realized she was crying. Neither of these students is lying. We shouldn't frame every disagreement as a disagreement between a truth teller and a liar. There are a lot of other possibilities. Not all my clients are men, by the way. Two freshman women got drunk, and they ended up hooking up with a guy. Both feel that they were raped by this young man, and one of them chose to file a complaint against him with the school. During the course of that investigation, she came to feel that the other female freshman who was part of the three-way had also assaulted her. That woman became my student. She was found responsible for sexual misconduct and suspended for three and a half years for an incident in which she feels she was raped. When the narrative is black and white, victims can become perpetrators. All of these stories in most of my cases have one thing in common, alcohol abuse. Excessive drinking in college is a key piece driving this epidemic, so let's stop ignoring it. We're afraid to talk about the role of alcohol abuse because we rightly don't want to blame victims. But I'm talking about preventing people from becoming perpetrators. If the mission is to end sexual assault, we need to lean into the gray zone, not erase it. Let's stop equating a good college experience with getting wasted all the time. Let's create specific terms that name specific actions. Let's teach the nuances of consent and good communication. And most importantly, let's treat sexual assault on campus like a public health issue. That means preventing, not just punishing. We're never going to expel our way out of this problem.